So the 3D Print Show is a great chance for us to connect with our customers. And our customers really span all the different businesses that you could imagine additive manufacturing and 3D printing are being adopted by. Aerospace, automotive, creative design, artwork. So my particular role is to really engage our medical customers. One of the most exciting things about the medical marketplace is we've answered the why. Why use additive manufacturing in medical? I think that there are three great reasons that we've understood, which is it can either impact the design and manufacturing process, it can improve the delivery of healthcare, and it can lead to the creation of new products or new product categories. Uh, let's take the first example. We've known for 25 years that 3D printing really changes how designers can express and engineers can express the creativity of what they're designing and developing and manufacturing ultimately. And that just continues to move into the manufacturing space where we see medical developers, medical manufacturers adopting 3D printing to very rapidly create jigs, fixtures, they're doing manufacturing solutions. And we can see this across anything from injection molding. So recently we've partnered with Warrell Design, uh, industrial design firm that is in Minneapolis. And Warrell and Stratus has partnered to dramatically change the cost structure of making an early mold to mold 150 to 100 products. Within this, this molding application, you can now turn the cycle time of making a mold to injection mold a medical part from four to six weeks to overnight. We've never had one that's taken longer than 24 hours. Most of them are somewhere in between five and 24 hours. We dramatically reduce the cost by two thirds to three quarters. We go from a mold that's very expensive at 12 to $16,000 to about $3,000. So between cost and speed, this allows medical manufacturers to think of creative solutions. Potentially you're making a short run of products to do a clinical trial. You don't have to invest in incredibly expensive manufacturing tooling and technology. So there's the first value proposition. So the second value proposition is how do you change the delivery of healthcare? And this is happening at the hospital level. And it's research hospitals in the UK. We have uh, Imperial College London. We have a company, Replica 3DM. They have been on the forefront of thinking about how they can use the visualization capabilities of additively manufactured or 3D printed models. What you can do in a 3D printed model is it gives you x-ray vision. You can print out a skull that's clear, and in the case of Imperial College, it was a brain tumor, that you can now look in and see where that brain tumor is, plan your surgery, things that you can't do when you're operating. And that gives very, very complex surgeries the potential for greater success in shorter time frames to deliver healthcare to the patient by coordinating all the aspects of multiple clinicians that will perform that surgery on the patient. Really uh, amazing story, but beyond that story, we also have Replica 3DM that is partnering with multiple trusts within the National Health Service of the UK, currently at about 25 of the National uh, Health Service trusts are using Replica to fabricate models for anything from cranial maxillofacial reconstruction, planning out cancer surgery, uh, planning out complex operations, uh, vascular surgery. It's really exciting to see the creativity that our customers are using our products that do this in multiple colors, multiple textures, from rubber-like simulation of skin all the way to the hard bone tissue. Very exciting to see how they use our products. And what we're doing, in turn, is getting their feedback to say, how can we improve? How can we better simulate what tissues feel like, because it's an important aspect of physician training. When we look at physician training today, and historically, it's largely been done on cadaveric tissue, it's been done on animals, and if you think about this, if you're trying to practice for surgery on a pediatric patient, if you go to look to practice on a cadaver, likely you're going to get somebody 70 years old. Now, if you really want to practice, 
you can take the multi-material, multi-color, and kind of artificially x-ray vision clear models that are 3D printed, plan out your surgery, train everyone on what that is. When we think about residents, fellows, we think about continuing medical education, new products that medical manufacturers are trying to introduce and show physicians how those products are used in surgery. We now have the ability to go from a digital file to an on-demand print to create training phantoms. So we're not looking at animals to do our practice surgery. We're not looking at finding the right cadaver. We can do it off of the 3D data that comes from a medical scan, a CT scan, an MRI, even an ultrasound. And this is an amazing advantage that doctors are just thinking of creative ways. Healthcare companies, medical products companies are always thinking about creative ways to use this to, from their sales process all the way through training physicians. So the third value proposition is additive manufacturing allows physicians and engineers and creative people to think about new product categories. So a couple of examples that I might take is historically in prosthetics sometimes not the most exciting field of endeavor in medicine. I mean, it's not like brain surgery, right? In terms of the collective uh, opinion of the lay public. But if you are facing the need for a prosthetic, historically you can either get a hook or you're getting today a very, very expensive, fully roboticized, sometimes cumbersome from the battery pack and all the actuators that can restore that function. Now there's a new product category going into the middle. It's taking a scan of the patient, actually matching if you've lost your right hand or were born without a right hand. We can mirror digitally your left hand, create a additively manufactured 3D printed prosthetic. And there are a lot of creative people that are using the empowering access to 3D printing tools, whether it's low cost printers like MakerBot or service providers like Stratasys Direct Manufacturing, we're breaking down the accessibility for people to think of creative solutions, make a new product category that restores function, but doesn't cost, to, to do, use a horrible pun, an arm and a leg. So within that, we have an amazing new product category being created just by empowering people with access to 3D printing. So, the industry is growing by leaps and bounds. And what is powering the industry is really the engagement with our customers. They come to us with what the material solutions need to be. Stratasys, through our machines, now supplies over 1,200 materials to the marketplace that goes through 3D printers. 25 years ago, we had one. It was a brittle, semi-transparent plastic. Now we have the real textures, real engineering materials, such as ABS, infused deposition modeling. That is a very resilient, very, very tough plastic. We have all kinds of colors, textures, even high performance, classically aerospace materials like Ultem and uh, high impact polycarbonates. Think bulletproof plastics, bulletproof glass. These are really opening up the creativity of designers and that's what's powering the growth of this industry. We even have materials now which carry all the regulatory traceability and approval to be able to be used in medical products. And it's this aspect of the industry as our customers reach out to us and ask us, we need these provided, we need these in your machines. That's opening the door for more and more products to be delivered every single day.